Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. Today's video is about INFJs. Are INFJs feelers and in what way are they feeling types? If you look at the classic definition of being a feeling type, I think a lot of INFJs might say, no, I think I'm an INTJ or no, I don't know if I'm a feeling type or not. I tend to be on the border between the two. And often it's that INFJs, they do have some traits of feeling, but not the most obvious examples of it. There are, however, I've devised three tests that I can use to figure out if somebody is an INFJ or not. Number one, the first test I use is called the marshmallow test. And it comes down to essentially spotting the squishiness of an INFJ. Now, when you talk to an INFJ, what you will notice is while they don't display, you know, immediate affection in the sense of, oh my god, I'm so sorry, oh that's terrible, how could that happen? INFJs do demonstrate sensitivity when listening. They do demonstrate a tendency to react and respond emotionally to what you are saying. When you are telling an INFJ a difficult experience or sharing something hard for you, INFJs will look at you with open understanding and sensitive eyes, demonstrating reassurance, making and helping you relax, showing you that you can keep talking and that their experiences are safe with you and that you will show sensitivity and tact and non-judgment while listening to them. INFJs inspire and encourage other people to share negative feelings with them so that they can help build trust, reassurance and support in the group. So INFJs, they are marshmallows. They melt when you tell them compliments or when you describe or talk about sad experiences. They visibly show that they care when you are talking about something difficult. So in that sense, that's one key factor to spotting an INFJ. The second test I would talk about is the damsel in distress test. And it comes down to essentially awakening the INFJ's eagerness to help and support the people around them. INFJs are naturally innately sensitive to people who need help. They notice people around them who seem lost or confused. They see when somebody is looking around them or is looking uncertain or confused about something. They notice when there is something difficult going on in your life. They think about and they study the people around them and they reflect on the issues you might be facing and they try to offer some support or guidance and if they notice that you are struggling with something they are usually the first to try to help you through it and to support you through it. So the damsel in distress test, act lost, act sad, act uh, like you're struggling with something, see how the INFJ responds. The third test I would call the Socrates test. And uh, essentially, when you take the matter of philosophy, a problem with philosophy is it's not science. It essentially comes down to subjectivity. It bottles down to not something we can measure or test. I mean, sometimes it can, but that's never the purpose of it. Philosophy is for the soul rather than for the science and it's for soothing and understanding and uh, trying to deal with or process an experience. INFJs are natural philosophers and tend to have pronounced and complicated existential views. They tend to, and you can spot this in one way, you can ask them to describe their feelings on different existential topics. Do we have free will? Why do people die? How do you understand the phenomena's death? Is there an afterlife? INFJs are typically people to have strong opinions and thoughts and views on this matter and they spend a lot of time thinking about it. It's not just that they can think about it, anyone can think philosophically, can dwell on or reflect on these things, but it's the depth in which they entered into these thoughts and the nuance and the complexity as they explain them. 
often it's not that they can shrug down their life philosophy to a simple punchline. It's that they can write big, ex uh, complex books following through hundreds of pages describing their views and experiences and struggles with these different problems. So you have the marshmallow test, which is just spotting the sensitivity of an INFJ. And you have the damsel in distress test, just to spot the caring side of an INFJ. And you have the Socrates test, just to spot the fact that the tendency in INFJs to dwell on these different complex questions of life, questions that serve no uh, you know, practical value to society, questions and answers that... Uh, cannot necessarily or immediately translate to innovation or technological development or to scientific progress, but rather to mental or spiritual maturity and uh, exploration. INFJs, we are not passionate, we are not warm and optimistic speakers, we do not rally everyone to feel strong emotions we don't tend to believe in or dare to express emotional intensity it's often hard for us to show investment in something we care about we are usually more distanced and careful when talking about our emotions we talk about our emotions in third person rather than in first person we talk about them as things we are processing or reflecting on rather than things that we are feeling or experiencing directly. Emo INFJs, we don't set high, intense or bright emotional atmospheres. We don't make everyone feel that, yay, everything is great and everything is going to be amazing and everything is going to work out. INFJs provide reassurance and more careful emotional support more nuanced emotional support, focusing on helping combat the negative emotions rather than to spread the positive. INFJs, they don't uh, jump over your emotions. So when you talk about something difficult, they're not going to change the topic to something positive. They're not going to go from, yeah, you had a bad day, but hey, there's going to be sunshine tomorrow. <laughs> no, INFJs, they focus on that. Why did you have a bad day? Why did this happen? Or what can we do about it? How can we understand it? What can we do to deal with it? You know, feeling, feeling is an umbrella term. It's not the, something you can define in one way. You know, if I define feeling as an INFJ, a lot of ESFJs are going to be like, what? No, I'm definitely a thinking type. I don't have that at all. And that's just how it goes. With uh, every type, you have to create a personal definition, a subjective example to help them understand the phenomena itself. It essentially, on an abstract level, boils down to quality over quantity, to how things are felt rather than how they are done, to the experience of something rather than the task or activity of doing something. But... These are just abstract terms that describe something. It's not something practical we do in a specific situation. So it's very hard to translate to every single feeling type or to build a personality test around. INFJs, we would describe feeling in ourselves as innate sensitivity, you know, a desire to help and support the people around us. And as a desire to understand humanity and life and death and experiences that we all have and we all struggle with. Not just intellectually, but also emotionally. The desire to go into something not just intellectually, but also emotionally. That's core for an INFJ. And INFJs, they do have several areas where they might appear as thinking types. But remember, this is mostly due to a misunderstanding. It's not an actual description of what an INFJ is. I am sometimes typed as INTP or ENTP. But it um, comes down to a misunderstanding because I might not smile a lot or I might not radiate warmth or affection outwardly. I can appear cold or distant at times because I go so deep into myself. And I become so removed from the topic and the subject 
that I forget how it is felt or how it is experienced for other people. I don't show an openness to cooperate or collaborate with other people online, though I try. I'm very bad at initiating these collabs with other channels and YouTubers, though I might want to. I can kind of stick to my own race and I get caught in my own thoughts and my own ideas and I have this ability to do things alone and I don't really need anybody else and I don't tend to depend on anyone else. I'm so independent that I think that can scare people away at times. At the same time, I don't know if anybody can relate, but I feel so much, so many things and then after that, I feel I'm somehow supposed to pull myself together and do something constructive and worthwhile with it. And I don't know how to do that. How do I go through the existential anxiety or dread I might feel at times or the struggles and the confusion I might feel in regards to my own life or my own decisions or my own journey and my own experiences and how do I stay productive and effective in my work and in my career while I do that? How do I push myself and whip myself to keep doing something when I am going through an emotional struggle or when I get stuck or caught up in the people around me who need me or when I get lost in personal problems or family issues or things that are happening around me. My need to understand and resolve my feelings before I can take action is my greatest inhibition from taking action and from creating content and keeping a steady pace and consistency in what I do. But it is also what keeps me from making bad decisions and simply punching my hand bloody against the wall. I don't do, do, do. I think, 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 and then after that I can do. And what happens is uh, there is a wave where I push out and a wave where I process and that's just how it goes. The most obvious example for why I know I'm a feeling type and not a thinking type is my natural tendency to embrace and accept subjectivity. You know, while thinking types can go and respond to feelings in a certain way, you know, a feeling as it's something icky or sticky or untested or subjective or something to keep away from you. Where for me it is something that is natural and positive and just a part of being human. You know, psychology is the study of humanity and humans are subjective. So our approach to people also has to be subjective to reduce the human mind to something quantitative or measurable or to simple numbers or to one singular objective definition. That's not going to work. Rather, the desire to unite human understanding and awareness and perception and the desire to understand the perception of other people, united with your own perception of the same topic, that's the way forward. Embrace the subjectivity and the viewpoints of the different types and build a typology that works around and with thanks to the subjectivity of people around you and of self-assessments and of people's stories and of youtubers and of people talking and then put it all together and learn to see with the eyes of other people read books see other perspectives train yourself to build empathy that's the way to becoming a master psychologist or a reader or a type master or whatever you want to call yourself for me Feeling is something that essentially bottles down to how things are valued and by people and by myself, but mostly by other people. I have a natural blind spot in that I tend to focus on other people's emotions before my own. And I have a blind spot in that I tend to uh, focus on understanding emotions rather than feeling and expressing emotion. I try to push myself to be vulnerable and to show more passion and affection, but often it's faint and while I do and after I do, I feel a bit naked and a bit like uh, 
I revealed too much and uh, showed something I shouldn't have. My tendency to delay in things, my tendency to not just go for the cheapest option or the fastest route or the most effective tool or the most smart way, but instead to uh, try to find something that's true for me and that fits with myself and my own experiences and my needs. Yeah, all things together, they just combine into who I am and uh, I am a feeling type and INFJs are feeling types and this is the way INFJs are feeling types. And it's also the way INFJs are not feeling types. So there is a whole scale out there in which INFJs lack feeling or don't demonstrate enough feeling. But there are some areas that prove our identity and prove how we fall on the scale. And you gotta learn to look for the right things and don't get lost in the wrong things. Thanks for watching and I hope this video made sense to you and uh, helped you understand INFJs and feelings and emotions a little bit better.